to Open Dialogue here live on Ahlul Bayt TV. I'm your host, Fahima Mohammed, and I want to welcome all of you streaming, whether you are here in the UK or across the globe. I love having these topics as we discuss so many different issues, and tonight is no different. And I have an amazing, talented guest all the way from Australia. And I want to welcome her because she is here awake at 5 a.m. in the morning, or probably a little bit later, and just for this show and I just want to say thank you so much and welcome to Sister Zainab Sajjad Ali. Salaamu Alaikum. Alaikum Salaam. Thank you for having me. No, I am so happy to have you here today. I have been admiring your work from a distance and it's an absolute pleasure to have you. Um, you are creative, you're an artist, you are very um, talented, mashallah, and what your work depicts, we will go into it. Today's topic is around Shia art and how it changes sort of the um, idea around Islam. And there's a lot to talk about, which we're gonna dive into uh, very shortly before we do, I just want to remind the viewers that this is a live call-in show. If you do want to call in, the number is at the bottom of your screen. Also, the opinions of my guests and anyone in the panel is their own. It doesn't necessarily sort of reflect onto the channel. I myself will question um, my guests generally, not actually even giving my opinions, but I like to sort of, you know, question with regards to addressing different perspectives so that we can have a much more balanced and fair view and have sort of different opinions and perspectives out there. And again, I just want to thank you, uh, Sister Zainab, for uh, joining me today. I know it's very early in the morning there in Australia, and I really do appreciate your time. Can you first tell me a little bit about yourself and what do you do? Oh, thank you first for the compliments. Uh, so I'm a social scientist. Um, I work in the community welfare sector um, in a government uh, contract. But outside of my day-to-day -day work, I am an artist. I've been semi-professional since 2009, but particularly focusing as a Shia artist since uh, 2018 and dedicating my work solely for the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Mashallah, that's absolutely amazing. And we are going to be showing some of your work, your art, your painting in a few moments. Oh, there we go. Um, that's amazing. I can't, I can't even understand how somebody could draw so beautifully because I can barely do stick men. So for me, this is like, honestly, more than just art. It is absolutely beautiful. We're going to go into discussing um, how did this come about? And what is your sort of um, way of drawing and depicting uh, some of the characters of the Ahlul Bayt? And how have you been received uh, doing these kinds of work? Uh, so I guess the main inspiration is Catholic art. So I wasn't raised particularly religious, but I do remember um, being quite interested in all of the stations of the cross in a church. So I was more interested in the art than I was God. Um, so I think the inspiration now would be like uh, back a couple of years, I was doing Byzantine type uh, icons of Prophet Isa alayhi salam and Mary. Um, and that was like, what, 2012. And then now I'm doing that style specifically for the Athel Bait. But the only difference is, is that I put in nebulas and galaxies in the background. And I do that as a reminder. I think the word in Arabic is Hercula for the, uh, the realm of atoms. So about the spirituality of the station in the universe and received um uh because i depict the faces um mm -hmm. i have gotten a lot of abuse and i have um because i have depicted the prophet peace be upon him but i did with a veil i usually only veil the females and the prophet um when i re when i last had instagram i was getting extremists abusing me and reporting mm -hmm. my artwork um you know they're they're like that they're valid to do that but report they're reporting someone else's work really really affected my instagram but also um my portrait of uh shahid soleimani 
um, made me reported and my Instagram was locked and no matter what I did, um, yeah, at that time I remember anyone who posted him was getting reported and losing their page and it kind of just got to a point of it's not safe to be on Instagram anymore. Wow, you've um, actually highlighted more than I expected and I'm really, really happy that you're sharing your personal story and your journey so far. Before we continue, I just want to welcome our Sayed, Sayed Rezavi. Salaamu Alaikum. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Salaamu Alaikum. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Um, it's always a pleasure to be here. I learned so much from everyone, especially you, the scholar, and of course, our very talented, amazing guest tonight, all the way from Australia, we have Sayed. And we have just been showing her pictures. She has been um, a little bit uh, under scrutiny with regards to depicting some of our um, infallibles. Um, she has actually had abuse online for you know uh, her paintings and drawings. And there is a sad side to it even though she has actually um, drawn some beautiful wonderful art depicting and creating what we believe in which is really interesting actually so say it when it comes to Shia art um, do we sort of like um, have a difference in the general Islamic world with regards to creating pictures and stories and representing what our faith and belief is especially when it comes to um, some of the characters that you know may be drawn uh, we know even in in the month of Muharram, uh, we have pictures uh, which may uh, reflect of Imam Hussein salam, may not necessarily show the complete face, but what is the rulings on that? And does it even differ between our Shia sect itself? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yes, I was listening to the sister while joining uh, the show. Uh, from Shia Islamic point of view, Drawing uh, the face is not haram, uh, and also doing a sculpture, three-dimension sculpture, is not haram as long as uh, the artist does not believe that he is creating a god or a deity or something worshipable and uh, uh, an exact uh, uh, copy of the living. Uh, but usually the sculptures are either very small or very large, or uh, most of the sculptures uh, nowadays are three dimension uh, or Im embossed type of sculptures. Um, and those are permissible and uh, nothing wrong. As far as the uh, Ahl Bayt uh, and holy personalities uh, face is concerned, we should not uh, uh, show their faces. And if uh, for some reason the full face has been shown in the clarification of the film or uh, at the bottom of the art piece, uh, the artist should declare and say that this is not the image of uh, the prophet. This is just a, what do you call? This is an imaginary reflection of mm -hmm. what they mm -hmm. may have looked a lot, look, looked like. So, but it is better not to show the faces of the infallible at all. And, Thank you for uh, as clarifying as that. Saying, as Sister was saying, uh, I have faced the same problem with uh, my Instagram. And face, my Facebook account has been uh, closed because I showed the pictures of Asim Soleimani. They gave me some warnings and they and just close the account. So this shows that what a hypocrite type of world we are living in. Every kind, any kind of abuser and rape and uh, uh, satanic cult pictures and images and everything is permissible. And the person who, uh, by, by the way, what I'm saying and what sister is saying, it only reflects our personal opinion and uh, yes. it does not reflect the TV channels. Uh, opinion and uh, they are not accountable for that. Uh, we are taking the full responsibility of uh, saying that Qasem Soleimani was being praised uh, as the person who defeated ISIS and uh, how come America assassinated him? 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No, I echo everything that you said. And we did actually make that very clear at the beginning with regards to our own opinions here. And especially mine, which is actually can go anyway, because I like to play devil's advocate, making sure that everyone's voices are heard. So I'll question you in many different angles. It doesn't really reflect on my opinion. Um, I think nowadays we have to be so politically correct, because as you can tell, we are obviously uh, seen in a particular way and our opinions do matter. And regardless of you know even depiction um there is a lot of spirituality around art how do you see that translated in your artwork uh sister Zena? um so i'll just first first up state that my marja is ayatollah sistani and his fatwa about depicting the infallible alayhi salam is that you must do it with uh a lot of respect and you must um i'm just reading it it's quite wordy actually that's fine um, <laughs> yeah. uh, and when you do depict it it can't contain anything that might detract from their status and basically when you're depicting them as the say it said you're not saying this is exactly what they looked like um i have gotten a lot of flack for some of my imams having lighter skin but it's more that I don't particularly have the talent to show the nor. <laughs> I'm not stating that they were light skinned. At the moment, I'm depicting Imam Reza alayhi salam, and I modelled him off of a Somali co-worker. So, okay. if anyone has an issue with that, they. Can. <laughs> um, but when it comes to the spiritual in art, I'll actually quote um, the artist uh, Mahmoud Farsian. So he had stated about his work which of the alphabet, but also because he had work, done a lot of work in the shrine. Um, he said, uh, and I quote, as an artist with the blessing of their art can be in a state of constant love in connection with the one being Allah. Uh, the internal transformation that follows this experience can take the artist into a much wider realm. So a lot, there's a lot of irfan when it comes to art, um, but also I, will bring it up multiple times is that um, Catholic art is so similar to Shia art. Um, and in looking at Farsian's quote about spiritual and art, it also actually reminded me of Pope John Paul's letter to artists, um, Pope John Paul II. Um, and he said in the letter to artists, every genuine art form in its own way is a path to the inmost reality of man and of the world. Uh, the approach, therefore, is a wholly valid approach to the realm of faith, which gives human experience its ultimate reality. So you see that it, the similarities of the power of art to be spiritual is, is the same with our brothers in Catholicism. Very, very interesting. And you've done definitely your research on this. And I do really admire not just your painting, but your knowledge and talent as well. It goes hand in hand. Um, it is absolutely beautiful what you do. Um, say it when it comes to having these kinds of pictures in our homes, there's a lot of people that may say if it was, even if it's not depicting the imams in particular, but of general pictures, say even of our family members, when it comes to, you know, showing the eyes or it's animals, uh, things like that, and it's not permissible what is the actual rulings with regards to that well uh, as far as as i mentioned before that uh, majority of the pictures that have uh, been drawn like imam ali imam Hussain, imam Hassan of uh, panjitan i mean the five infallibles uh, these pictures or imam Reza in some cases uh, their photo has been uh, presented by some artists and uh, all of them claim that this is what they saw in their dream and they are reflecting mm. uh, the image that they saw in their dream and they're not claiming uh, to be the exact uh, image of imam and also in historical books a lot has been say, said about prophet muhammad's image how he looked and uh, imam ali how he looked and how Imam Hassan, Imam Hussain, and others. But still, that does not give us excuse to say that this is the exact image of uh, the holy Imam or infallible. Uh, so we have to be careful. But as far as the uh, room where we pray, as long as the picture of anyone, even our family member, uh, should not be in the direction of 
Qibla, and we, especially in the area where we pray. Uh, if the photo is uh, on the wall in the direction of Qibla, then uh, either something uh, has to cover the picture at the time of prayer, or the best solution is not to place the images of the family member or anyone uh, uh, in the direction of Qibla where people could pray. And uh, if, if the picture is behind or elsewhere, that has no problem according to any uh, Shia Marjat belief. Uh, so we have to take care of uh, these issues in this manner. Is there a reason, uh, Sayyid, why is it uh, not allowed? Uh, well, I mean, even uh, not only picture, if there is something in front of you that uh, diverts your attention uh, towards the that art piece or something else that is in front of you while you're praying, it is recommended not to be there. So the mm -hmm. prayer is mm -hmm. a time where you have to concentrate, and that's why it is recommended uh, when you're praying, you concentrate and look at your turba uh, in front of you so to focus your uh, prayer, so to, to let you focus in your prayers. Sure. Thank you so much for clarifying that, because we do have a lot of uh, people that, you know, are quite strict about it and a lot of it has not really been raised before. So um, as much as we have the fiqh and the permissibility, I know that you, uh, Sister Zainab, do you feel as well that uh, where when we compare, you know, the Western view of art and uh, calib calligraphy um, being Islamic art, um, is that, how do you explain that? I mean, when it comes to pictures and calligraphy, um, is there a difference? Is that something that you do as well? Um, is it sometimes something where, you know, Islamic art is only looked upon as, you know, one way where it's just sort of drawings, um, not depicting any particular personality, but it's more like, you know, like we said, calligraphy or some sort of like, you know, pictures, which is like a drawing, uh, not personalities. How, um, as an artist, did you sort of translate and sort of, you know, do more of personalities than the calligraphy and find that also a measure of Islamic art and the influence for even people outside our faith? Uh, so I'll first up say that I was originally Sunni. I did belong to the Hanafi Madhab. Uh, in their fiqh, it is no depiction of humans, no depiction of animals, let alone if you depict the prophet, then um, you're in danger. Um, but when I did discover Shia Islam, um, that's when I started seeing all of these paintings. I'm like, oh, hang on, I can do that. Um, then I saw the spirituality in that. But it's interesting if you look at the history of the Prophet, peace be upon him, being depicted. Um, it's only in the past 300, 200 years where it's been seen as totally banned. Um, if you looked at the even the Ottomans, it had depicted him so often, the Safavids. In history, it's always been there, whether it be in uh, manuscripts or not. So if you uh, compare uh, Salafi or Wahhabi fiqh to ours, um it's kind of a, a total ban compared to us that we must do it in a respectful way and state that we're not saying this is exactly what Rasulullah peace be upon him looked like um but we're using it as a way to express our love for the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam but also like I back when I had Instagram because my style is very similar to Christian art. A lot of a lot of uh, iconographers were contacting me from Russia, from Ukraine, from you know America, saying, "Who are these people?" Like mm. they re could recognize that they were religious art, and they were um, a lot of people called my art very dark. But I think that comes from you know we can't sugarcoat the realities of what happened to the Ahlul Bayt yeah. alayhi salam. Um, so, you know, the, the power of Catholic art, I'm using that ex same uh, expression to show the power of what happened to the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam and how important they are, uh, not just within our faith, but historically. Um, when it comes to multiple ways of uh, doing art, like say, for instance, calligraphy, my Arabic is horrid, uh, hopefully before I die, I'll get very good at calligraphy. Um, 
but in the contemporary sense, uh, if you look at painters like Hassan Ruhal Amin, his work is absolutely beautiful. Then we've got the digital artists, like there's 14 Roses Art. She does it all by a tablet and a little pen, and she, the work that she does is absolutely amazing. Um, you have graphic artists like Muhammad Hamza of Intifada Street. He's actually doing a graphic novel about Karbala. So wow. imagine how that's going to teach the youth, let alone in that field, teaching others about Islam, teaching others about Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So there's a lot of power when you go out of, because Islamic art is always seen as architecture and calligraphy. Mm -hmm. And then in most mm -hmm. Western English books, Shia art is mentioned in perhaps a paragraph. And they always mess it, always mention the Safavids. So I think uh, we do need to uh, say, for instance, when uh, the last president of Iran, Rouhani, had met with Pope Francis, Ayatollah Sistani had met Pope Francis, he gifted him a book of Mahmoud Farsian's prints of his artwork. If it's, it can create the most interfaith dialogue you've ever thought of. If a president of all gifts gives to the head of the Catholic Church a book of our religious art, then I think, like, obviously Rouhani understood the power of that and how it would affect a Catholic. Um, so I think that every other way that we're expressing ourselves, not just through the traditional forms of calligraphy, uh, you know, there's metal workers, there are... But even the people that do the weaving of the tapestries are now Husseinias, even they're artists. So we have to really think about everything we we do that expresses our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the infallible salayhi salam. Wow, that's amazing. And you've really given us a history lesson as well as forward thinking, because I think, as you mentioned, the most important word there is the power of art. And my takeaway from this is that it is powerful and it's powerful more than words. And a lot of us may not listen, but we will visually uh, remember something and it will actually tell a story. And these are the kind of things that we remember, even if we are studying, if we depict something in a picture and in a story, we kind of, you know, move forward into having better memory and sort of understanding. Now, Sayyid, do you think that our youth uh, should be encouraged with more Islamic art? I mean, we have lost ourselves a little bit, especially as we used to be in the forefront when it comes to these kinds of professions and expressions and things like that or do you think that because everything is so like uh permissible not permissible or you know we're so scared of you know expression in a way which is you know according to the thing according to what is permissible but people are obviously translating it very very negatively as our sister has mentioned as well you know she's doing it as a for um you know translating um our faith and the fact that she's been contacted around the world, you know, with that, she's actually giving uh, da'wah, which actually we will come back to on that point. What is your thoughts on this, Sayyid, when it comes to us, you know, being quite held back now, even with what we say, what we do with regards to the drawings? Because again, um, is that also opening a can of worms that we don't want to enter into? Or can and we actually do a very safe way as well as, you know, expressing ourselves so that we can actually have more uh, connections and build more networks amongst even people outside our faith. Uh, art plays very important role in the spread of the message. Uh, and uh, I have said this repeatedly in my interviews and programs in different universities as well when I was asked this question, that if you can transmit the, the message of religion in the local art and local language, that means that uh, the future of uh, uh, that religion is guaranteed in that part of the world. Uh, look at uh, Persians. Persians were not uh, Muslims or so Urdu speaking uh, people were not Muslims or so Indonesians, Malaysians were not Muslims before. Mm -hmm. But uh, when uh, gradually Islam reached to those parts of the world and the poets start to uh, uh, create uh, poetry and compose poetry and uh, recite poems about Islam and personalities of Islam, 
it remember because the art makes that uh, uh, ideology to uh, stay and remain in that area in the similar way music also can be used in the right way uh, we cannot just uh, give general fatwa and say music is haram or musical instruments are haram it depends on what you compose and what type of message you are uh, giving through the mess uh, through music and how you are presenting it you are not copying the corrupt type of music and if you're presenting it in a in a very artistic way and uh, trying to convey the message uh, of islam in that format then that becomes acceptable in the same way uh, pictures also uh, if uh, the artists of the community who have embraced Islam or have become Muslim and they start to reflect uh, the Islamic messages through art, you can guarantee the future of that uh, religion or Islam uh, in that part of the world. So all we need to do, uh, the ulama and scholars and the Husseiniyas and Islamic centers, to di uh, direct uh, mm -hmm. the youth and youngsters in the right direction to play and compose and learn right music to play to to, to uh, learn the uh, right kind of sculpture and art and uh, and especially also when they are uh, writing a po poetry or writing a song uh, they should be directed instead of giving fatwas and pushing them away from us we should direct them in the right direction so they their their expertise can be used uh, for the benefit of islam and benefit of uh, uh, promoting the right culture uh, let me give Absolutely. another example let me give another example i went i went to yeah, caribbean yes. and uh, there was an artist who uh, presented the whole, entire uh, tragedy of Karbala in rap music and I came back and played that for the scholars and there was there was a Marja Taqlid in London for treatment I played it for him as well and he said he said uh, uh, it may not please our ears but who are we to declare that rap music is haram because it doesn't please my ears it it is the culture of that that part of the world and rap music can be used for promotion of corruption and the rap can be used for giving the right message so as long as the message is given properly and uh, it benefits the youth and it can uh, not be misinterpreted and misused then it's fine very very interesting i think we've got a conversation here which we hardly have and it's really amazing that we have you sister zainab as well as our sayyid to give all of this insight and we you know divulging into areas and sections that we don't normally speak about and most people would not even want to speak about and as we said that you know art is really powerful it does spread a message it does bring um sort of a picture to life it tells a story and as you were talking before sister with regards to spreading the message, bringing awareness. Um, when it comes to that, when we mentioned a little bit before, you know, our, in our conversation about Dawah, can you talk me a little bit about what's your idea of, you know, hopefully if you do continue in this path, uh, regardless of, you know, the challenges that you do face, inshallah, after this show, people will have more understanding for it and be more supportive. But um, how would you see this as a way forward to actually uh, create more awareness and actually bring about more of the message, especially when it comes to our debates? So when it comes to Dawa, I still am plugging the Catholic thing because it was only art that saved Christianity. During the Dark Ages, no one could read. No one understood Latin. Mm -hmm. And people understood the stories of the Bible by the artists representing it. Art actually did save the faith. So if you think about Shia art, I'm, I'm not doing calligraphy. You don't need to know Arabic or Farsi to understand what I'm showing you. And say, for instance, there was a an American Orthodox artist who did ask me about my artwork of Imam Hussein, and she said, who is this man? It's a very powerful artwork. Can you tell me about it? So, you know, art doesn't need to speak. 
doesn't need to speak. It's just everyone in their own imagination will take from, that's why I do a very emotive pieces and a lot of people get very annoyed by it because in the traditional art that you would see in like Iraq, it's always very beautiful imams with no expression on their faces. But as soon as you give expression on the faces, as I did with Imam Hussein alayhi salam, um, people can feel the power of what happened and the sorrow mm. of what happened. Um, so, you know, if it takes if it takes me getting a lot of abuse, but I still taught one American Orthodox lady who was an artist herself, I still taught one person who Imam Hussein was alayhi salam. Amazing. Absolutely beautiful. What would you like to see, Sister Zainab, when it comes to our youth um, with the message? And how would you like to, you know, give some sort of like practical tips, advice, even with the ones that are sort of like, you know, quite critical, abusive, negative? How would, you know, you like them to even, you know, understand what you're doing and what does it mean, regardless of even how they feel and their own sort of permissibility with regards to their own sect or, you know, whatever they follow? How would you want to address it? You've got a chance here live on you know the bay tv what would you like to put out there so that we can send a message we can you know understand what it is you know um from an artist's mind and what is you know what is behind it because like you said it doesn't need words but i think sometimes when people don't have the understanding and then openness and awareness maybe something underneath the art art or the, underneath the picture and now because we are here on a live platform maybe you can highlight that and i'm giving you the chance to maybe you know give some sort of like you know uh insight some information what is it that you want to say to these people who are negative who are scared again i think fear comes from lack of a bit of information and knowledge as well as you know a, a lot of other things that may come to it so what would you like to say to these kinds of people I think creativity does take a lot of courage. Um, so I would mainly like to teach people that it doesn't need to be perfect. It does not need to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You always start somewhere. But what I like to tell people, it doesn't matter if it's a film. Say, for instance, there is a photographer in Sydney, Tom Toby. He does all of these portraits every year for Arbain. And the power of those photos it, a lot of people do, you know, uh, film work, as the Sayed said, that there was a rap song about the Imam alayhi salam. So any way that you could possibly create something that isn't, uh, that either depicts or gives respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Imams alayhi salam, and the Prophet, of course, peace be upon him. Um, if anything you do that is respectful and you want to express your love for them, then go for it. There is, you, you know, creativity does take courage. A lot of people are like, oh, what if people don't like it? What if it's not good? It doesn't matter whether it's good or not. What matters is, is that whilst you're making an artwork, you should feel a connection. You should feel a connection because Allah loves beauty. So whatever you're Absolutely. doing to actively, it, it's, it's, for me, it's a, it's a form of dhikr. For me, it's that. I go into a spiritual state when I'm painting. So, you know, me doing, there's a quote that says, an artist prays by painting. So as long as, you know, it doesn't matter how good it is, as long as you're doing something and you're thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whoever you're trying to depict, you're doing so respectfully. Um, not just as an expression of love, but whilst you're doing so, you do feel that deep spiritual connection. Definitely. Um, say it, same kind of question. What would you sort of say to the people that are not really artistically viewed? They don't understand that even if you look at a picture, it can say a thousand words and those words can be different to each and every individual because expression is obviously, you know, um, very individual, you know, individualistic. Um, but at the same time, are we opening something that we're going into areas where it can actually and I guess the fear here is, is that we're becoming more modern. We're becoming uh, sort of like taking on certain things, like when you mentioned even rap or some things like that, whether it's right or wrong, um, whether it's the message, which is great, but are we falling into uh, away from our culture, our standards? Because this is what people normally uh, address when it comes to the negativity, is that why do we have to follow in this Western ideology and ways? Um, why can't we just stick to our own cultures and you know, ways? So what is the, the sort of like, uh danger in actually 
going forward in that way? Or is there not a danger if we were to look at it in a particular way, as in, you know, we're addressing the youth, we're addressing today's day and age, we are in this West, and we are actually integrating is, you know, what is your thoughts on that, Sayed? Well, as sister was mentioning, uh, we, we as a Muslim community, especially Muslim leaders, have to direct the people in the right direction so uh, the art can be used uh, properly. Um, uh, while I was in America, a uh, convert further uh, who was expert in showing the battlefields of uh, World War One and Two uh, in three dimension. Uh, images like he, he would bring sand and soldiers and horses and create the scene uh, uh, in on the ground. Uh, and he asked me, Ashura is coming. I have this uh, expertise. Can I use this to show the battlefield of Karbala and uh, invite people on the day of Ashura to see it? And then I will explain to the children who is who and what is happening here and where Imam Hussain placed his uh, camp and how the battle took place and where he uh, was killed and this and that. I said, yeah, there's no problem. And he created, and I, I'm sure the children uh, in, during that year learned more uh, from that art than my speeches because I was giving the speeches, half of them uh, were not understood because I was using a lot of uh, Arabic uh, narrations and uh, and uh, people cannot imagine when you create uh, some, uh, when you make it uh, visual for them, like okay, make a film or present it in uh, uh, with with an art uh, that remains in their mind, it becomes like a carving on the stone. The child, that child who had seen the scene of Karbala in that Islamic center uh, in Huntsville, Alabama, would remember that forever and for, for the rest of his life. And same thing happens Thank with you. the films. I mean, we should encourage our youth and youngsters to come forward. Actually, today I received a call. Uh, about Ahlul Bayt TV and they were saying that can you Maulana please tell Ahlul Bayt TV to not just uh, to uh, uh, have talk shows and only uh, speeches of the scholars they should invest something on children's program art films dramas quiz shows and other things so it becomes interested interesting for others and children can uh, benefit from it so that's an advice indirect advice to our tv as well that they should uh, uh, more, more on art and I mean, maybe nowadays everything is possible online we can ask the Absolutely. sister to have online art classes through our tv channels and i'm sure people i know really i would that. love that <laughs> I would love that personally. I certainly need to learn how to draw, I tell you. Um, finally, I just want to thank you so much, Sayed, for that. That was really um, enlightening to hear you speak about that and clear up any sort of misconceptions about us moving forward in a direction, obviously with direction, with guidance, that's definitely needed. I just want to uh, give you a couple of minutes first, um, Sister Zainab, we have come towards the end of the show very quickly. I just want to say to also the viewers that please do reach out to her. Whatever you do have negative, I'm just telling you here, we do support you. I love your work and inshallah you continue. Please tell people of your website and how to get in touch with you, how to buy your paintings and to learn from you as I think what you do is absolutely amazing. It's very insp inspirational. I'm so happy to have you on the show. So um, take it away for the next minute or so with your uh, details and any final thoughts before we end. Thank you so much, sister. Uh, so I do have a Facebook, um, either my personal one under my full name, or I do have a Facebook page for my art, which is The Painter of Infallibles. I also have a website, which is thepainterofinfallibles.com. But I do notice I'm getting more uh, communication through my page at the moment. So whichever way that people prefer. Um, I do ship worldwide. I have the picture of uh, Lady Zainab that showed up earlier. That's in the Bronx. That's that's in New York. And it and it wow. baffles my mind. Um, there's uh, Imam Sajjad pieces in London and that same brother, actually I'm working on a commission of Imam Mahdi, alayhi salam, for the same brother who bought 
my Imam Sajjad alayhi salam painting. Um, you know, I, I'm sending another painting off to Canada. I've got multiple paintings in Canada. So alhamdulillah, I'm able to not only earn halal money, but I'm also able to, you know, if it's in your house and you have a visitor, it doesn't matter if it's a mailman. They come into your house. Oh wow, what's that? Who's that? So that's just what that's what I like. And then also the company I deal with with Pack and Send, they um, they're an Australian company. They have said that they can ship to Iran and Iraq. They've got no issue with it. Um, and even the men who come from Pack and Send to come and pick up my artworks. Oh, who's that? Why why do you paint that? So it always creates uh, very good discussions and dawa as well. Um, but I'd like to finish off by just saying thank you for having me. Um, and also I do need to shout out to one person, Hussein Mackey. Through him I was able to sell artworks overseas. Um, and I think uh, as a community, like the community has been amazing, especially in Melbourne. Um, the Baraka programs has purchased a couple of my artworks to be prizes for the kids uh, with quizzes. Amazing. So alhamdulillah for the Melbourne community as well. Um, but, you know, it shouldn't just be about me. We should be encouraging artists, doesn't matter if they're kids, from every single community to express themselves so that we have a new generation that uh, can use our art spiritually as well as culturally. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sister Zainab, all the way from Australia, joining us at very early hours of the morning to make sure that she's here live on TV to talk to us. Thank you so much, Sayed. Please do reach, reach out to Sister Zainab for any sort of her work. Thank you so much for listening tonight. It's been a really pleasurable to have this discussion. And I do thank you all for your support.